Hi guys, this is Chantel and today we are going to be preparing the garden for the upcoming frost. So over here behind me I have this bed that has some eggplants, pepper, and tomatillos and fennel and such. And I have the sweet potatoes that are not ready to be harvested in a different bed on that side over here. And I have some just regular potatoes in front of these, um, the eggplants that also need some more time to be harvested. So I looked at the 10 day forecast and it looks like we are not going to be getting our frost in um, any day soon. So that's a good sign. But if I want these plants to continue to produce, I would have to cover them up in order to get something out of them. The coolest temperature that we are going to be getting at night during those this 10 day forecast is 31 degrees and the uh, warmer warmest temperature is going to be 43 degrees at night so did i say 32 34 degrees not 32 sorry i have frost on my mind <laughs> yes so the cooler temperature is going to be the coolest temperature that we are going to be getting is 34 degrees so that means that these plants are also going to be slowing down on production. I was thinking of taking some of the peppers, like one of each variety of my favorite varieties and uh, taking them inside. But now I'm thinking about it, I don't have enough soil on hand and I don't think I have enough pots on hand either. Um, I don't even know if I have enough space inside. So I still have some time, I can think about it and I can decide whether I want to do that or not. But I do know for sure that I want to dig up the rose rosemary, I have a pot for that. So I'll be taking that inside. I have a rosemary in the tomato bed on this side of me over here. So we'll be digging that out and if I have enough time I will be planting a lilac. I still have one more lilac that needs to be planted or at least we could just prepare that area for it to be planted. I feel like that's just going to take me a long time to do what I need to do over here. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to do that but I might be wrong. I don't know. Yesterday I came out here and I pruned all of our fruit trees uh, in the backyard and they're all ready for the fall and they look pretty good right now. So it looks like some sort of an animal that was heavy, climbed and was eating some of the fruits that was on, on the trees and uh, it broke some of the branches on our fruit trees. So uh, I uh, cleaned that up and also one of the pear trees was um, a little bit over pruned. <laughs> so, uh, I over pruned it this summer so because it was just it had a lot of water sprout it ended up after that putting a lot more water sprouts which are basically branches that go straight up and they were you would end up with ton of tons of them inside of the tree so I just thin them up a little bit and then in the summer I'll come back and thin them again I also trimmed the ends of the trees um, not the tallest branches because I couldn't reach those and I needed a ladder but the ones that I could reach that are facing the outer perimeter of the tree uh, of each of the trees and that just kind of helps keeps it um, in the shape that I want it to be and it doesn't extend and grow all over <laughs> this area because I don't want it to do that. So I have this frost cover over here that I had over the tomatoes that were in this bed over here and I never got to move it out of here because uh, life. <laughs> and I'm going to be taking this frost cover and putting it on the eggplants and the peppers over there. It also looks like the butternut squash needs to be harvested. Not all of it, but some of it. So I might not harvest it today, but I will probably harvest it either tomorrow or after tomorrow. So let's get this frost cover over to the eggplants over there to get them covered.
I got a couple tomatoes. <laughs> I harvested all the tomatoes off of them, but it looks like they're still producing some tomatoes. This tag keeps bothering me. I need to get my seam rippers and rip it. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm hoping to be able to pull out the tomatoes today too, but I don't think I'll be able to get to do that. This is what I use to clip the frost cover to the metal poles and if you can see I have these metal wires that extend over the bed from one end to the other and these are just a high gauge uh, coiled wire and you cut it to the length that you want it to be and you can find them um, in many uh, hardware at many hardware stores I got the first ones that I got were from oh I forgot the name of the company You'll have to excuse me. It was a it was a long day today, <laughs> um, and so I have several sizes. So basically, you just want a um, heavy gauge coil that would be able to keep the frost covers um, over the plants and also not bend because of the weight of the frost covers. Now. Uh, Typically, you'd want the plants to not touch the frost cover because if they do, then they could get frost damage on them. But the eggplants are so tall and I don't have anything that is taller than the eggplants. So if the tips of the eggplants get damaged, that's okay. They are still producing at a lower level, uh, lower than the top uh, canopy of foliage. The peppers, some of them are also slightly higher than the metal than the metal wires that's okay there are other ways that you could use other than these metal gauge wire but we found that this was uh, one of the least expensive ways to do it at the time i bought it it was i think 36 dollars or 34 dollars or and it or 24 i don't remember honestly it's been a long time um, now I have no idea what the price is everything has doubled and uh, you could probably use PVC pipe but you would need like the really large uh, type of uh, uh, clips these are just paper clips basically so I have the small ones and I have medium and I have these large ones uh, to hold the, the the reason why I use these is to hold the frost cover to the metal wires so that they don't fly away. Now this frost cover is not going to stop the snow. Uh, when the snow comes, it's going to weigh down on the frost cover, and especially if you get heavy snow or even light snow, you'll, it's not going to stop it from piling up because it kind of dips in a little bit. And if you don't want it to dip in, you'd have to put a lot of these um, or you'd have to create some sort of an A-frame. I suppose you could use wood, um, but that's just more of a permanent type of thing and I don't want to do that. I want to be able to move these from one place to another. And the frost cover uh, keeps the temperature on the inside uh, warmer than the outside obviously and, and I've noticed that when I planted uh, my tomatoes in early spring uh, when I opened up the frost cover there was a lot of humidity and warmth a lot warmer than outside it was kind of a greenhouse vibe but not with the extent of the greenhouse uh, temperatures that a greenhouse would give uh, like a uh, cold frame or uh, something of the sort. Uh, so it does keep it warmer under the frost covers and there are uh, several types of frost covers. There are some that are thicker than others so they would protect um, your plants for a longer period of time uh, because they would provide more temperature protection uh, and they would keep it a little bit warmer on the inside. Now you could also use just any old pet bed sheet if you want uh, just to kind of keep the frost off the plant and not necessarily to keep it warm on the inside if that's your goal. If you just want to keep the frost off your plant basically what happens is in the morning you have the morning dew and uh, that when you have a temperature a uh, freezing temperature that morning dew 
freezes and it freezes on the leaves of the plants and causes frost frost damage so if that's all you want to stop then you could just use any any anything that is available to you you don't have to use these frost covers but if you want to use these frost covers and the metal coils uh, I would try I'm not sure if I can put a link for the coils but I do I do know that I have a I think I have a link for the frost covers but I'll try to link everything that I have over here for you guys down in the description box below and if you are wondering where that description box below it's usually under this video there's an arrow you can click down you can click on that arrow and it shows you all the descriptions and I put in a lot of uh, a lot more details in there also and uh, if you are interested if um, uh, in gluten-free uh, recipes. I also have a free cookbook for you that you can get. I have a link for it down in the description box below as well. Um, is there anything that I forgot to mention about frost? So when you are digging up the plants, if you want to dig up plants to bring them inside, you want to reduce the size of the plant so that it doesn't go through a shock and trying to support all of that uh, leaf structure and stem structure so you want to reduce its size by quite a bit. I do that even when I'm transplanting plants. I uh, trim them so that uh, they would uh, be able to support what they have on them uh, without having to struggle because if they have a lot of growth on them it would be a lot harder for them um, to support that growth because they just are they are going through transplant shock because their roots are trying to acclimate to this new place and trying to learn how to absorb nutrients from that new place and and also to get rooted in that place as well all right so right now uh, I'm gonna take my um, clips over here I have a whole pocket full of them <laughs> and start clipping the frost cover <laughs> to the wire frames that I have over there. I have seen some other companies that have these season extenders also. I've never tried them myself, but I think this should be sufficient enough and this has been sufficient enough for me and I've grown super a cabbage super early in the season. It was still below freezing and I planted it as soon as the soil was workable I was able to plant it and then it would still have temperatures below freezing I put the frost cover on it and everything was just growing fine One thing that I forgot to mention about frost covers is that you can also double and triple layer them if you have a thin frost cover. Now this frost cover that I have over here comes in a double layer but they have a seam that allows you to rip it and it opens up into two, uh, into a large, one, one large layer. And that's what I ended up doing. I opened it into one large long layer because I wanted to maximize the amount that it can uh, extend to so that I can use it on the areas that have uh, tall plants in them because those would need bigger, taller hoops. Now keep in mind that when you do double and triple layer your frost covers, you want the plants to still receive sunlight. So you don't want to uh, go overboard with that. If your frost cover, cover is already thick uh, you, and it doesn't allow tons of sunlight in already, 
um, you might not want to do that because as it cools down we uh, automatically shift to uh, less amount of sunlight at least over here where we live in New Hampshire uh, we um, in the summer uh, the sun goes down around uh, sometimes nine o'clock at night and right now it's going down at around five o'clock so that's a huge shift in uh, the amount of sunlight that they receive and it also uh, would rise uh, the sun would rise a lot earlier in the summer than it does in the uh, uh, fall and winter season <clears throat> I think frost covers can also be used to shade your plant if you live in a really hot environment but uh, again keep in mind that they do uh, make it a little bit warmer on the inside so you might want to keep the sides open and you could just put the frost cover on the top uh, to protect them from the uh, heat to kind of provide a uh, like a tree almost <laughs> some sort of a shade for them so they don't they don't uh, scorch from the sun I like to go heavy on the clips because uh, we get a lot of wind over here and if I uh, don't put a lot of these the, the wind can pick it up and blow it away I think though I might have went too heavy on this one <laughs> right. I'll fix it I also like to uh, straighten the, the middle between uh, each uh, of these wires so that it's not dipping too much and um, the higher it is and the more away from the plant it is the better it is because these plants are still growing yeah. even though it is uh, the end of the season over here the summer season I could if I want to choose to rip this whole bed out and plant fall crops I also have strawberries that I need to transplant uh, but I think uh, and my plan was to put them in these beds over here on this side but I think that I will be planting the strawberries where I have where I have planted the grapevine and let these continue to grow I don't want to push down over there because this is already higher. I feel like I, well, I positioned that one too close. I positioned the middle one too close to the first one. I should have positioned it right here. It's okay though, I think it should be all right. I'm not going to clip this one too much, I just want to give it a few clips to stop the wind from blowing it away because the eggplants are here. When I get to the ends of the frost covers where they meet the end of the raised bed, I like to use these big clips. I feel like I need like two or three maybe of them if you can get your hands on uh, the bigger clips that would be great because then you could just sort of bunch it all up and clip it and then I also use some heavy rocks to put it at the end and around the sides so that the wind doesn't pick it up because sometimes even if you clip it all the way down if there are uh, heavy winds it could just pick up this frost cover and lift the uh, lift all the lift a lot of the clips off so that would be a helpful thing to do so that's what I'm gonna do right now I also have this uh, have this thing over here I think uh, 
It was here when we when we moved in. I think the previous owners used it as a cover for their fire pit. It was a totally rusted fire pit and that was on top of it. So I saved it because I sometimes use it as a cage for plants to protect them from the critters. Um, you know, for low plants. And I'm going to be putting this down on this end over here because there's a lot of fabric over here and I don't want to cut it right now uh, because I feel like this won't be the appropriate length if I cut it because it's all kind of... Uh, it's just the plants are tall and it's not... yeah. So um, I'm just not going to cut it now. I'm just going to put this at the end because there's a huge roll of this frost cover fabric at the end over here. So I was looking at these potatoes and it looks like they're done so I'm going to try to dig and see if they are done because these are the purple uh, potatoes and on this side over here over here I have the fingerling potatoes. I have a video on uh, when I planted these potatoes I'll link it at the end of the uh, at the description. I'll link it in the description box below. Hi beautiful watch out. When I planted these potatoes, I did the mistake of not looking at the bag to, s the bag to see when these uh, potatoes would, uh, how long these, it takes these potatoes to mature, the purple variety. Uh, and I was looking online and it looks maybe uh, around 95 days. And I think they already had that. I don't remember exactly when I planted them, but I think they should have had enough time to mature. So I'm gonna dig one and see if they are ready. The fingerling potatoes, I don't know how long they take to mature either. I didn't even look it up because I planted these uh, from store-bought fingerlings uh, a few years ago and I just kept saving the seed potatoes to plant again. So. I really don't know how long they take. I think it could be 120 days. I hope not. But they look like they can keep going a little more while the purple potatoes look a lot more done than the fingerling. So let's uh, let's dig and see what we have. I don't know. The soil is still wet because it takes it forever now to dry. And this variety is small. They don't grow super big. Ooh, look at this one. Is that cool? Oh, here's another one. You see how potatoes grow? Yeah. They grow underground. Pretty cool, huh? I'm going to get my coat. Alright. Where's her pink jacket? Can you please try to find her pink jacket? <laughs> Are you called Habubi? I don't know. Maybe I should cover them. 
What do you think, Serenity? Uh. We'll dig one more. I feel like they need a little more time. I don't think they're fully ready yet. Let's dig this one. So I dug two potato plants and this is what we ended up with. I feel like they could still keep going because these are still very small. Um, and you notice there's a large one right here but the rest are super small. This one is okay. So I'm gonna let them to continue to grow. I mean you can see the foliage is still pretty green and uh, I didn't see any flowers on them too. And usually the flowers are an indication that they are developing tubers. But with this variety, I haven't seen any flowers. And even with the russet too, or the fingerlings. And I think maybe because of the time that I planted them, maybe uh, because we went through an extreme long period of heat and then cold weather all of a sudden. I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, but they are making potatoes, so I'm gonna just put the frost covers over them, let them keep going for a few more weeks, and then we'll harvest them. So you can see all of the things that I need to protect are now protected. I ended up running out of the staples, so I think I'll have to go around the property and grab some rocks and put them at the edges of this uh, fabric over there where the potatoes are so that they don't blow in the wind. And I think I will be able to transplant the rosemary and put it inside, but that's the only thing I'll be able to do right now because she wants mama. So, uh, are you going to let me dig the ro rosemary up? You want to do it with me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Put this dirty tissue. This is the rosemary over here. You can see it's already trimmed because I've been harvesting from it. So all I need to do is just dig it up and put it in a pot. I will not show you the whole process. I'm just going to dig it up in front of you. That's it. And I'm going to give it some plant tone and take it inside and that's it. So let's dig this beauty up. I love the smell of rosemary. Mm. Mm. She can't give you up. She's holding a shovel. Look, you want to help me? Go ahead. Help me with the shovel. Help me. Is she even helping at all? Sort of looks like she is. She's helping a whole bunch. <laughs> I think she is helping a little bit. Uh, oh, good job. Okay, so I'm going to remove the dirt off of it because I don't want to take this dirt inside. Might have bugs in it. Uh huh. Oh look, there are worms. That's good. Uh -huh. I think they were making the soil better for it. A lot better. Oh, my eye. <laughs> you wanna help me? You're gonna get your hands dirty, are you sure? No. You don't wanna get your hands dirty? Come on out, worm. Oh man, lots of them. Wow. <laughs> All around the rosemary. It's like they built their home here. <laughs> Maybe they live along the roots and they eat any any dead stuff that mm -hmm. is next to the plant. It's the perfect place for a worm. The soil looks yeah. good. 
I think that I'm going to hose the root ball down to make sure there aren't any bugs in it or uh, stuff like that before I bring it inside because I don't want to bring this soil inside. It's going to be full of things that I don't want in my house. Like weeds, poison ivy, stuff like that. Well, it's not going to have poison ivy, but it's going to have bugs and all the yucky stuff. So It might even have an extra right. worm. So I'll do that <laughs> later. Looks like a tree. It does. <laughs> Actually, rosemary plants, rosemary plants can grow really big in warm so, environments, but so they're in our environment they don't. Yes. Okay, so they're <laughs> This whole place now looks like a ghost town. <laughs> there you go, here's your October decoration, fall decorations for you. <laughs> and we have the butternut squash. Uh, we'll just draw some faces on them. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be leaving a few videos for you over here to watch and if you're new here and you like these kinds of videos please hit the subscribe button and the bell to receive notifications of whenever I upload new videos and uh, don't forget to like, share and do all the things. <laughs> thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye!